<laughs> you too, Miguel. All right. So when you're doing the ratio for slope, what is a ratio? What is the ratio of slope every time? Rise over run, which means which letters do you do on top? Y. y is over x's. So if we were doing the slope formula, it would be delta y over delta x. Remember that delta just means that's a Greek symbol for change. So change in y, which is like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And Daisy asked a good question. She said, does it matter which one is like your y2? And it doesn't. You could start, like say we're looking at line n, you could start with this coordinate or this coordinate as long as if you start with the bottom one for y, you have to start with that one for x. So just be careful when you're lining those up. You can also, if you have the picture, just count them. But be careful, because people make mistakes all the time with counting. And I know this is slightly difficult to see, so I know that it would be easier if the lines were darker. All right? OK, how do you do number four? Add them together. Why? You're trying to find each angle. What do you know about the angles in a quadrilateral? There's four of them, and they add up to 360. How would you find that if you didn't just know it off the top of your head? Uh, n minus 2 times 180. Good. So 2 times 180 gives you 360. So then you say 1x plus 4x plus 5x plus 6x equals 360, which ends up being 16x equals 360. So what was x? X was 22.5. And then what do you do to finish answering the question? Plug it back into all of those. So plug it into 1x, 2x, or 1x, 4x, 5x, and 6x. Mm -hmm. How come, why do you have to add X? Because you want to know the You want to know the actual size, whereas this is basically like, remember how we drew like a model? And then there was like a bigger one yesterday. So there was a model shape, which was a small one. And then we were thinking about a bigger shape. That's what's happening here. This is essentially just a model. And then you're, you've got an actual shape. And it's multiplied by something. And it's all multiplied by the same something. So you're trying to figure out what that something is. We call this right here, another term for this is scale factor. Any of you guys ever heard that term before, scale factor? All right, all scale factor means, how many of you guys have seen a map? I'm assuming everybody has at one point looked on a map, right? What's a little thing in the corner? What does that mean, the scale, though? The distance. Why, why does there have to be a scale on a map? Why not? Because it's smaller. What's the point of a map? So you can know where things are, right? So if you had a map that was as big as the actual city of Houston, would that help you get around the city of Houston? No, because you couldn't unfold it in your car, right? If it was actually as big as the city of Houston, you couldn't unfold that map. So a scale factor means it's scaled either down or up. And in most cases, we're scaling it down. Scale factor just means how many times you're multiplying it to get to your actual scale. So when you see scale factor, that's essentially what number am I multiplying it by? And you have to multiply each piece by the same number. This works when we're talking about similar polygons because all similar polygons have a common scale factor. So if a polygon is going to be similar, what does it mean to be similar? Kind of the same, but not exactly. So similar, if you're looking for, like, what is something that's similar about Miguel and Daisy right now? They're, they're, both, <laughs> they're both wearing the same color sweater, right? They're not exactly the same. Obviously, there are a lot of differences, but they have some commonalities. Similar polygons will always, always have corresponding angles that are congruent. So all the angles have to be the same. The corresponding sides must be proportional. What does that mean, proportional? Corresponding sides have to be proportional. The same scale factor, right? So basically, if I'm looking at this one, if I look at triangle ABC and triangle EDF, and I want to know if it's similar, you've got to look at two different things. The first thing is, are all the angles congruent? Yes, they're all congruent. 45, 45, 90, 45, 45, 90. Now you've got to see if the sides are proportional. How do you figure out if the sides are proportional? They have the same scale factor. So basically ask yourself, what do I do to this DF to get to BC? Times 2. What do I do to ED to get to AB? Times 2. And what do I do to EF to get to AC? Times 2. So is that the same scale factor? 
Yes, so these are similar figures. This right here is the symbol for similar. All right, it's like just the top of the congruent symbol. I mean, I think so, but I think it's always. No, I don't think it's always. I do actually think this stuff, you think, it's pretty simple. Sometimes there will be decimal numbers in there and sometimes there will be variables and that's when it gets a little bit more confusing. But, all right. The hardest part, honestly, is just making sure that you have your corresponding sides lined up. So here it was pretty easy because they were positioned exactly the same way. So a lot of times the hardest part is just positioning them so that you've got corresponding sides lined up. All right, so similar polygons again. Two similar polygons are similar if and only if. What is this called? Almost. A biconditional. What's a biconditional mean? It contains if and only if. What does it mean, though? It works both if you flipped it and so you could say two polygons are similar if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding side lengths are proportional. Or you could say two polygons with corresponding angles that are congruent and their corresponding side lengths are proportional if and only if then they're similar polygons. So it basically works both ways. So that means you can prove that polygons are similar and you can also prove things about polygons if I tell you they're similar. Okay, what kind of shape is this right here? A, B, C, D, and E, F, G, H. Most generally, it's a quadrilateral. Specifically, it's a, it's not a rhombus. It's a, it's a trapezoid. Why is it not a rhombus? Rhombuses, all the side lengths are the same. This is a trapezoid because not only are the side lengths not the same, but you only have one set of what? Parallel, parallel sides. All right, so you only have one set of parallel lines. For instance, in A, B, C, D, which are your bases? Six, six and four. Six and four, so A, B, and D, C, good. All right, so I'm looking at this right now. Is it lined up the same way? Yes, yes? okay, so that means that I'm just gonna look at this. That means A corresponds to what? E, e. are those angles equal? D and H, C and G, and B and F. Okay, so all the angles are congruent, and then you just need to make sure the sides are proportional. So again, what do you do to six to get to 12? So your scale factor should be times two for all of them. Is five times two, 10? Four times two, eight? And 5.4, 10.8? Yes, so are these similar? So then we would write A, B, C, D is similar to what? E, F, G, H. Does the order matter? Yes. Yes, the order matters. Why? Okay, A has to go in the first position and E has to go in the first position because these two angles are congruent. So those are our corresponding angles. So it has to go A, B, C, D. If you write it like this, you could also write it D, C, B, A, but then that would be similar to what? H, G, F, E. All right, so this is true and this is true. You just have to make sure the corresponding sides and angles go together in your letters. All right, so identify the pairs of congruent angles and corresponding sides. So in this case, what are my congruent angles? Angle Q is congruent to angle Y. How do you know that? Okay. Do you say S and X? Okay, I agree. How come? Well, because the bottom angle already has like similar and congruent. No, you can. What what theorem can you use to prove that those two angles are congruent? No. Third angle theorem. If you know that the two angles, the two other angles are congruent, then the third one has to be congruent. Why? They have to equal 180. So if this were 60 and this were 60, and this were 70 and this were 70, you've only got one option for what that other one can be. So you know the angles are congruent. So then what else do you need to figure out to prove if it's similar? The sides are proportional. Make sure we're working with corresponding sides. So if Q is congruent to Y, which one does QR go with? QR goes with YZ. So I'm doing 12 
over 18. All right, what about SQ? XY. XY, good. So that would be 9 and 6. And then what about SR? Uh, all right, so that should be 9 and 13.5. If they are proportional, all of these fractions, another way to check it is to see if they all reduce to the same thing or all divide to the same decimal number if you want to do it on a calculator. So 12 over 18 would reduce to what? Two-thirds. Two -thirds. Six over nine? Two-thirds. Two -thirds. And then does nine over 13.5 reduce to two-thirds? 4.5 goes into 9 twice, right? What's 4.5 times 3? 13.5, so does it reduce to 2 thirds? Yes. All right, again, you can check that on a calculator. This will give you 0 0.666667, this will give you 0 0.666667, and this will too. Okay, so another way to check it if you don't immediately see what the scale factor is, is just set up the proportion and divide them all and then you can figure out as long as it has the same fraction or the same decimal, then can you say that these are similar triangles? What are the similar triangles? Triangle X, Z, Y would be similar to S, R, Q. Good. X, Z, Y is similar to triangle S, R, Q. Okay, the similarity ratio is just the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides to the similar polygons. So again, that means if it's similar, all the ratios are going to be the same. So the similarity ratio of A, B, C to D, E, F is 3, 3 to 6 or 1 to 2. The similarity ratio of D, E, F to A, B, C is 6 to 3. Does the order matter, and why are those ratios different? Why is this one 3 to 6, but this one is 6 to 3? Yeah, you're going from the smaller triangle to the bigger one in your first one, and then from the bigger triangle to the smaller one. So does the order matter? In a ratio, yes. So whatever they ask for first, D, E, F is the bigger one, so that would be 6, and A, B, C is the smaller one, so that would be 3. Where did those numbers come from, 3, 6, 6, 3? The sides. All right. They were all the same, so would I have to do this differently if they weren't all the same? Yes? yes? Okay, let's go back to this, for instance. In this one, this is my similarity ratio, but once I reduce it, what happens? They're all the same, so really, what's your similarity ratio? This one right here, okay? So if they're similar, that means you really only need one. All right, so you don't have to do it for all three if they're similar because you know that they're going to have the same ratio once you reduce them. Okay. Can I figure out if these polygons are similar? Bianca? Okay. I've only got two sides. What else would I need to know? I would need to know the angles, or I would need it to tell me what? They that they were rectangles. If this said, determine whether the rectangles are similar, would that be enough? Yeah. Yes, because if it's a rectangle, what do you know? All the angles are 90, and opposite sides are congruent. So if this is 4, this is, all right, this is, and 6. So then how would you figure out now if they're similar? Four to six, and it should be the same as twelve to sixteen. All right, reduce four to six. Two over three, and then what about twelve to sixteen? Three over four. So are those the same? No. So are these similar? No. You couldn't answer that. If it just said polygons, you would have to say like I don't have enough information. Okay, so this is your at the board practice. There's only one practice section today, so once you're done with your markers, you can put them back up. But go ahead and do these eight questions or so.